Hello, everyone, and welcome to this community conversation where we are going to be highlighting COVID-19 vaccine, talking about some insight and perspective. Dr. Goodness Tedla, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me, hon. Thank you so much for being here to help us understand more, get some questions answered in this conversation. I want to let you all know a little bit more about Dr. Gundis Tedla before we do start this conversation. Dr. Gundis Tedla is a board certified in internal medicine. She has been in clinical practice for over 19 years. She currently works in Charlotte, North Carolina, specializing in hospital medicine. She is currently the president of the Charlotte Metro Area Chapter of the Society of Hospital Medicine and of course does so much more than that in the community. So we want to thank you for serving on the front lines, uh, for truly being a healthcare hero, and again joining us today. Uh, so you. let's let's dive right in. Um, we know that we now have this COVID nineteen vaccine, and you were one of the first people to get that vaccine. Can you talk to us first about your personal experience with it and and what it was like? Well, getting vaccinations obviously is not anything new you know i i'm so used to getting a flu shot every year without even a thought about it but this particular vaccine was unique um i remember you know getting the first COVID vaccine with a few a couple of my colleagues and there was a lot of excitement in the air uh, because of what it signified um it meant that there was finally hope on the horizon and um, there was a lot of gratitude to be able to get this layer of protection against such a horrible virus that's killing so many people. And then there was also a little bit of guilt and humility about being one of the first few people to get immunized as a healthcare worker when we know so many people need it and are still waiting for it. So it was definitely a special day and um, it was a little different than other vaccines that I have received in that respect. I can only imagine how many emotions going through your head. Um, and as you said, you know, we're seeing, I guess, it come out in different phases where, you know, some people are able to get it, some people are not able to get it. But to your point, it does give this uh, sense of hope, a glimpse of hope at that. And, and so we're happy that you are on the front lines and you, you've taken it. And, and what was your reaction? We know that there's two doses. Can you talk to us about, did you have any reaction to it or what you've sort of seen with other people and their reactions? Um, well, their um, reactions were very predictable, uh, particularly the first vaccination. I didn't feel a thing and it was not memorable at all. But the second vaccine, I knew to expect in the first 24 hours, some type of flu-like uh, symptoms or just generalized achiness. I know some people said they had some fevers, uh, some headaches, and so, and you know, generalized muscle soreness in the area of injection is as expected with any vaccination. So I was mentally prepared for that, um, but it was really uneventful. You know, the day later, I did have, you know, a feeling of kind of under the weather uh, sensation, throughout the day and general achiness, but it was totally responsive to um, Tylenol. And I was able to carry on with my regular day uh, and it was uneventful and it was gone the next day. Um, you know, I've, I've heard some people whose, um, you know, achiness was a little more significant than mine, but, you know, I, I haven't heard anybody who's had any symptoms that lasted um, part, you know, past uh, the first 24 hours um, following the vaccine. And that and I'm sure there may be some rare events of people who may felt a little discomfort, you know, several days, but I don't know of one. Well, that's that certainly uh, gives a little comfort to know that uh, people yeah. are, are having uh, pretty straightforward experiences. And we understand, you know, the information changes every day, every week. As a healthcare professional, someone who is a medical doctor on the front lines, what can you tell us? What is the latest information you have that you can share with us about the vaccines? So currently there are two vaccines that are FDA approved for use in the United States. One is the Pfizer vaccine and one is the Moderna vaccine. Both those uh, vaccines require two doses, three weeks or four weeks apart, depending on which vaccine you get. Um, there is a third vaccine that's currently in on the horizon by Johnson and Johnson, which might be a single dose vaccine, but that is not yet FDA approved. So we don't know a lot about that yet. The vaccines that are currently available in the US are already being administered. Every state has their own phase. They're using age and risk factor as 
a way to categorize who is um, next in line. Um, for example, North Carolina, where I live, uh, and we started out with people that are in the healthcare field, in the front lines of healthcare, and then uh, it was followed by 75 and over. And then now we are past that and we are um, immunizing people who are 65 years and over and also those who live in congregate settings like group homes, nursing homes, et cetera. Uh, and most states are kind of right there. Um, it is important to check your own um, local public health website to see what phase they are in and also to see where you are, when you are eligible so that you are um, prepared to make your appointment right away. Um, the current status with the vaccinations is that there are so many people who want to get it, but the supply has been limited. And that has been the challenge. And because of that, you have to be very vigilant about finding out what phase you're in and uh, making your appointment and getting in line, you know, promptly so that you can get the vaccine. Um, you know, yeah. before they move on to the next phase. <laughs> While yeah, it's you, you, your phase, you know, just get after it. That's that would be my advice. I mean, listen, you all, she is saying be vigilant. All right. This is the time you have to keep up. I know I've been on some of these websites and I'll get on. It's like, you know, all appointments are taken or no more slots, you know, trying to sign up a relative or a family member. So yeah. I really appreciate your point about really trying to be vigilant because, you know, that that is something that's going to be important. And I want us to take it in a different direction at this point. Uh, let's be honest, there is still a lot of stigma around this vaccine, all right? There's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of people who are scared of it or maybe just don't feel comfortable taking it considering how new it is. Um, and of course, you know, just different theories out there. What can you tell us to help sort of ease the stigma? And, and what's your perspective on that? Well. I'll start with why I got the vaccination for starters. It's the same reason I get any vaccination every year, whether it's a flu shot or whether I get a tetanus vaccination or whatever vaccination I've gotten throughout my life. The reason is to prevent um, illness. And in, in, it's the same for COVID. I got vaccinated because I don't want to get sick and I don't want to get anybody else sick or worse. Um, and so that is the first reason. And that's the, you know, the most straightforward reason that anyone can use. Um, secondly, I just wanna get my freedom back. I wanna get back to normal life. And I know that the only way that's gonna happen is when we beat this pandemic. And the only safe way to uh, you know, get rid of this virus is to make sure that a majority of us are immune to it so it can stop thriving and spreading like it is right now. And there is no other safe way to get a majority of the population immunized uh, apart from mass vaccines. So knowing that, I want to do my part in fighting this fight. And um, if each of us went and, uh, and got immunized and we got to that 70, 80% um, immunity status that we need in this country to get some type of herd immunity, um, if we get that, then then we have a chance against this virus. And another really important um, point is that we have to get that um, done before this virus gets smarter and finds ways to be more aggressive and find ways to beat the you know the few um, therapeutics that we have available and even this precious vaccine that um, we waited so long for. So. That's another thing that is so important. And um, we can't get there if only some of us are immunized. All of us have to play a part in that because if some of us are immunized and the rest of us are susceptible, then this virus continues to thrive. I think it says something too uh, to see people like yourself. You know, you're 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 setting an example, um, showing people like me or other people. Well, if Dr. Gendis Tedla is doing it, I mean. She trusts it. So we thank you for setting an example because it does ease some of the concerns, I think, to know people who are getting it, to see people who are getting it. And, and so that that definitely helps. Um, and, and also when we talk about the vaccines, I would love for you to talk about the type of vaccine it is, because sometimes there are these you know, theories that get started or rumors where the, the COVID-19 vaccine has COVID-19 inside of it. And you know, some vaccines do have 
a portion of, of that inside of it. But in this case, from what we understand, it does not. So can you clarify that and how it works with uh, sort of it having the RNA factor and the messenger portion? Can you sort of break that down for us so we understand really what is inside of this vaccine? Sure. So first, it's important to understand how vaccines work. Vaccines are basically just a message to our body to build immunity against a particular infectious organism so that the next time it's exposed to it, it can attack. And that's how we fight a lot of, um, you know, infections through immunization. So it is no different for, our, you know, for COVID-19. Um, um, basically, what um, normally other vaccines have done is introduce the virus itself in some form, whether it's killed or when you know in a weakened form, or a piece of the virus, or a little protein that uh, you know that resembles the virus, or something that resembles the virus. Basically, that virus in some form to our body, and our body recognizes it as foreign and builds antibodies against it. In the future, if we're exposed to that particular virus or organism, the body's already prepared and will attack it, and we won't get sick with that with that um, virus. So, with the COVID the COVID vaccine, what it's using is not the actual introduction of the virus itself, but it's a new technology, the mRNA, which is just a message to our body telling it to build something that looks like the virus, a protein that coats the virus, uh, called a spike protein, and the body builds that, the body recognizes that as foreign and builds immunity to it and sits prepared. Next time the virus enters our body, we already have that immunity to attack it. So this particular technology has not, is not really as new as it's presented to be in, you know, in, in the media, in the, in the clinical research setting. Um, and in the research setting, it's been around for a while and have has been getting studied for use for other vaccines like the Zika virus or rubella and even for cancer treatment. So it's been published in scientific journals and looked at and has been touted as the future of actually immunizations because it can be um, a more efficient way of producing vaccines um, other than instead of you know growing the virus itself and killing it, you know, making a vaccine from it, that type of thing. So it's actually um, a, a really exciting that that science was already there and was able to be adapted to this particular need. And, and we got to take advantage of it. So we're very fortunate in that. So I don't think as the, you know, just in general, in the general public, we should be getting in the weeds of the microbiology of how vaccines are produced, but rather people should look at what is the safety and what is the efficacy. Does it work and is it safe? And how, where do we get that information? And that information comes from, you know, the CDC, the, the FDA that, that looks at the science. Experts actually get in the weeds for us on our behalf and look at the science. And what does this really mean? How does it work? Is it safe? Does it work? What is the risk and benefit profile? And when it goes through that vetting process and gets approved for the public, that means for me, I feel now confident that the people who have been trained for years to look at that, that data and that science and approve it have given me confidence to take this vaccine because now it's available. And so I think that's where your confidence should come from. The fact yeah. that it is, you know, it's gone through that much, you know, um, scrutiny and and has been deemed uh, deemed um, safe and effective. I, I love how you put that because like you said, experts have been doing this around the clock, putting in so many hours, so much work. And so it is important to, to trust and to to trust the people who are, are on the front lines doing the research, um, doing the homework and everything like that. Uh, so as we wrap up, you know, I, I thank you for even touching on some of the requirements earlier. We understand that, you know, phase by phase, it's gonna look different. Also where to go and get vaccinated. It's really important that we look locally because it's gonna be different depending on where you're at in the country or the world. And so uh, we'll definitely try to incorporate some links in, in the caption to main sites like CDC and um, some of the national health places to go look at, but it's really gonna be important that you look locally. Uh, but as we come to the conclusion of this conversation, where do we go You know, from here? What are your hopes for the future? I know you said earlier, this is sort of a glimpse of hope, but what, where do we go and what is your sort of your final message to anybody who is joining us today? 
Um, well, I have a few things to, you know, to kind of impart. Um, the first thing is be, um, you know, well informed before you make a decision about this vaccine and that be careful where you get your information from um, before you, um, you know, decide not to get the vaccine. Uh, look at credible sources for information about this vaccine. Go to the cdc.gov uh, um, website. That's the Centers for Disease Control. Go to the World Health Organization, who.org. And um, there is a lot of evidence-based, accurate, and timely, up-to-date information for consumers to educate themselves so that they can feel comfortable about making healthcare decisions for themselves so that you don't make a decision based on fear, but rather information. Number two, I feel like this is a privilege to be able to protect ourselves and arm ourselves against this virus that is basically raging around the world and killing so many people. And there are so many people that are so desperate to get it, but don't have that option. So don't waste this opportunity to protect yourself. Um, on the other hand, there is also a level of responsibility we have to play a role in this fight. We can't expect other people to do the fight and get rid of this pandemic for us. We all have to pay, play a role in this fight. And that is not just wearing masks and not just distancing ourselves, but also taking advantage of this immunity so that when we're immune, we don't spread it to other people. And also we protect ourselves, but we also um, weaken this virus's ability to continue to thrive and also get rid of it before it mutates um, and uh, turns into something more lethal and resistant um, as it has already begun to do. And we have heard about the variants that are um, um, already identified in the UK and Brazil and South Africa. And those may not be, you know, um, the only variants uh, going forward if we don't get rid of this vaccine, it might end up, um, you know, becoming resistant to to the immunity, the, you know, the immunizations that we already have, or even the treatments. So that's, you know, those are, you know, the biggest messages that I have uh, to people is um, that we could, this is a collective effort, and we can only get rid of this if we do it together. Mm, absolutely. Thank you so much for that message, Dr. Gaddis Tedla, and thank you for all that you do on the front lines. Everyone who is joining us today, again, we'll have links to the CDC as well as the World Health Organization in case you want to continue following up information there. Um, and then of course, check locally to see when a vaccination uh, opportunity is available for you and your loved ones. Uh, again, we want to thank you. We'll give you a round of applause for being here. Thank you, Hannah, for everything you're doing to educate the community and inform people about such important subjects such as the COVID vaccine and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. And to everyone joining us, as always, sending you all lots of positive vibes. Stay safe out there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.